Hello everyone, my name is Shailesh and welcome to session 7 of Financial Statement Analysis. In today's video, we are going to talk about analysis of various sources of revenue. So far in our six videos of Financial Statement Analysis, we have understood how a company defines revenue, how it reports revenue, what kind of data should be part of your operating revenue and what shouldn't be, extracting that data and making sense of that data. At the same time, we also studied normalizing that data in a time series manner to conduct analysis after incorporating changes due to revenue recognition policies or accounting standard changes. In fact, we also studied in case if a business does revenue restatement, what things to keep in mind. In today's session, we are going to talk about the analysis part. Remember the three-step process of financial statement analysis? Gather the data, understand the data, and then analyze the data. Now that we are done with the first two steps, let's focus on the third step, which is most important. How to analyze revenues. In this process, we are going to talk about various angles through which you can analyze revenues. One is understanding various sources through which a company generates revenue. It could very well be a product or a service level revenue. It could also be standalone or consolidated revenue. It could be customer wise revenue, operating versus non operating, segment level, geographical level, period wise revenues, and at the same time using revenue data to analyze the market share of a business. Now, these are a couple of angles which we are going to cover in the upcoming series. In today's session, I plan to cover product wise revenues through two processes, two methods. First, individual product wise revenues, and second, manufactured versus traded revenues. So let's get started. Like we have done so far for all of the video series by taking a live listed Indian companies example, we will be doing so again in this, in this case study as well. To analyze product wise revenue, we have taken an example of PVR. Now I'm sure everyone is aware of PVR. Uh, so I'm directly gonna open its annual report and on page 158, we will be seeing the income statement of revenues or sorry, income statement of PVR. Now, when you take a look at this, let me just quickly zoom through. When you take a look at the income statement of PVR, you will see it to be carrying the same format which we have studied so far. Now, let's understand how exactly these revenues are being generated. Once again, we are very much familiar to you know how to and how to actually understand these figures are computed we need to go to the footnote which is note number 25 it is by the way present on page number 187 now let me quickly go through page 187 and you will see different cuts contributing to that overall top line of the business it could very well be sale from services it could be sale of food and beverages now as you may already be aware PVR generates a significant amount of revenue from the food and beverages segment. Precisely, you can also see sub-segments of the services revenue. It could be movie tickets, it could be advertisement revenue, production and distribution, convenience fees, and virtual print fees. Now, these are certain cuts on a product basis or on a particular service by service basis you can analyze. In fact, other operating revenue also, you have a breakup available, food court income, gaming income, as well as management. Now, an analyst can see these individual lines over a period of time and take a look which particular individual line item or a product is contributing in which manner over a time series basis. It gives you a very good idea by doing a simple contribution or a common size analysis which particular product is growing and doing a YOY analysis, which means year on year growth rate analysis of individual products can give you a very good idea which product is driving the revenue. growth. Now, this is a wonderful angle to take a look at, hence product wise revenue analysis. Now, at the same time, you can also take a look at a very good example, which is VIP industries. Now, VIP Industries is into analysis or sorry, is into manufacturing of luggages. Now, VIP Industries manufactures both hard luggage and soft luggage. Now, if someone asks you to take a look at product wise revenues, a typical traditional approach, which by the way, now you guys are very much familiar with is opening income statement, which happens to be on page 169. 
going to the footnote, which is note number 26, which happens to be on page number 195 and taking a look. Now, when you take a look at the footnote, you won't find something which is known as hard luggage or soft luggage here. What I'm actually trying to teach you is one wonderful source where, again, you can take a look at product level revenues. Now, every company is mandated by MCA to file for a form which is known as MGT-9. Now, this MGT-9 form lists out a lot many details, including the principal business of the company. So let's take a look at MGT-9 form of VIP Industries. That is on page 54. Now, when you take a look at MGT-9 form, let me zoom in a bit so that you guys can take a look. This MGT-9 form has all the details of the company, where its address is, and at the same time, principal business activities of the company. As you can see here, it has given a percentage contribution to the overall turnover of the company. So how much hard luggage is contributing and how much soft luggage is contributing to the overall top line of the business. Now, you can obviously source the top line of the business from the income statement, study the footnotes, take a look at all the operating incomes and use these percentages to actually calculate the dollar amounts of hard luggage sales and dollar amounts of soft luggage sales. Not just that, what we have just taught you is one wonderful and an important source of information in an annual report. You will not always find the data points in the footnotes when you go for analyzing any particular company. With time, we will be showing you a couple of such wonderful sources on how to extract relevant and important data points for you to analyze any particular company. So in this case, uh, one new thing which you have learned apart from the previous video series here is another source to your kitty, which is MGT-9 form. Now, please don't take this in a wrong way, but not all companies will be giving information in MGT-9 form at a product level. But like I said, it's just one another source which you can take a look at if you are seeking product level information, just in case, who knows, maybe that information is available in MGT-9 form. If not, then perhaps the next you know, stop would be investor presentation as well as phone calls. Now, what these data points can teach us, you know, conducting a time series analysis and creating a heat map of the composition of product level, which I was talking about when it came to PVR, we have in fact done this analysis for you guys. Now, remember this is uh, year 2020. In 2020, the hard luggage contribution is 32%. Now, let me walk you through a similar analysis you guys can do all by yourself. Let's take a look at this 2022, sorry, 2020. Hard luggage percentage is 32% and soft luggage was 68%. And the revenue figure 1718, we have sourced from the income statement. Let me show you once again so that you get the point and you get a hang of the analysis. So page 169 was the income statement, so 1718 in crores is basically the overall revenue from operations. Now you may ask, why is it that I've not taken other income? Precisely, it includes a couple of non-operating items, which don't make sense when it comes to hard luggage or soft luggage, which is why revenue from operations has been taken. And by the way, you also need to verify the footnotes to ensure the revenue from operations line item has all the operating revenues in it. So taking a look, on a time series basis, conducting this analysis from 2013 to 2020 gives you wonderful insights about business. So in the initial five years from 2013 to 2016, you know, the composition of soft luggage kept on increasing. And now the composition of soft luggage is once again down. So there was a huge trend in 2014 to 2016 where, you know, duffel bags and everyone wanted to shift to the soft luggage. In fact, VIP hired quite a lot of brand ambassadors, Varun Dhawan and all not, to promote the soft luggage, which was very much hot during that time frame. But we are back to the hard luggage domain now, and which is where we can see that to be happening with the VIP industries. So 32% is hard luggage, which by the way, once again increased from 2017, where the contribution was just 24%. When questioned about this trend to verify whether the data is genuinely representing the underlying truth, the promoter of the company also confirmed the same thing in the con call. Like she said, you know, the trend is back when it comes to backpack as well as the hard luggage. Now, another angle which I want to cover in today's video is 
manufacturing and trading revenue. Now, let me explain what are manufacturing and trading revenue. Any business may actually manufacture things on their own and the revenue which they generate from that is known as manufacturing revenue. At the same time, there could very well be certain products which the business may choose not to manufacture by itself. See, there could be multiple reasons behind it. Maybe the business doesn't really see the profitability in doing so by yourself. Or maybe some other player has a huge operating leverage in that domain, you know, making it possible for the other guys to manufacture it at a very cheap cost. And at the same time, it could very well happen that the company has resources, might as well utilize those resources in specialized product manufacturing rather than a commodity product manufacturing, which anyone else can manufacture it for the company at a certain cost. So such goods are known as traded goods. So basically the company becomes sort of like a wholesaler where it has given a contract to other manufacturers. It buys that particular product from those manufacturers, simply branded their own names and sell those products out there in the industry. Now, in this scenario, what happens is when you actually buy these products from someone else and rebrand it to your uh, you know, copyright or whatever uh, trademarks, and then you sell it outside, the profit margins usually in these kind of products is low as compared to the specialized products, which tend to be most of the time manufactured in-house. However, that need not always be the case. One needs to keep in mind the margins around manufactured, manufactured products and traded products. You need to calculate it. Obviously, don't worry about that. We will teach you in the upcoming series how to calculate manufactured margins and traded margins or profit margins for these products. But to do that, the first step is identifying what percentage of revenue is being manufactured or what dollar amount of revenue is being manufactured by the company and what dollar amount of revenue is being traded by the company. Trust me, these data points are extremely crucial because usually the inventory which you actually buy ready-made from some other manufacturer is present on your balance sheet under a different ledger as well as the raw materials which you or rather the finished goods which you have created all by yourselves are present under a different ledger. We will talk about that in our inventory chapter but for now since we are focusing on revenues let's take a look at manufacturing and traded revenues. I'm sure some of you may have observed this when we were doing VIP industries analysis under the footnote we saw manufacturing and trading percentages. But like I said, not all companies will give out that data that straightforward. Like, for example, if you go for Sarah Sanitary Wear, you know, at, at times you will have to compute the manufacturing percentage and traded percentage. The company doesn't really disclose that data readily, which is where analysts keep on questioning the company over con call, bugging them to give out a breakup product wise and what kind of percentage do they manufacture and what kind of percentage do they trade. Anyways, now moving to a new example, obviously. Uh, Vidhi specialty. Now, Vidhi specialty is basically a company which manufactures colors. They are used in printers as well as food colors and likewise. So now they are not just engaging in manufacturing colors, but they also engage in trading these products. Let's take a look. So for that, once again, we need to, you know, the first stop should be taking a look at footnote of the income statement. So uh, revenue. So uh, moving to page 177, which happens to be the financial statement, income statement, where you can get the revenue figures. Now, something strange may pop in your head. Why is it that there is no 2018 figure? Now, what happened in case of Vidhi is, some of you guys may be thinking, maybe the company just started. No, that's not really the case. In 2018, the company did not report the consolidated figures, figures because, you know, till then the company had no subsidiaries. In 2019, they had a subsidiary, which is where for the first time the company started reporting consolidated figures because before that they were reporting only standalone figures and something, an introduction around this I had given to you guys in previous video. So do take a look in case if you don't understand. Anyways, we will be studying consolidated and standalone revenues in the next lecture as well in much more detail. So stay tuned for that. Anyways, moving to the case study at point here with the, with the specialty food ingredients, when you take a look at the revenue, to identify how much of that revenue is manufactured and how much of that revenue is traded, we need to again dig deeper into the footnote 15. Now, this footnote 15 is present on page number 205. Now, when you actually take a look at the footnote 15 revenue from operations, you will see how much 
goods are manufactured, how much goods are traded. And this is the total. At the same time, there would be a couple of other uh, operating income. So you can obviously add it to get the total operating income, something which we have covered in series one. So do take a look at that video in case you haven't. Now, let's move to the analysis part. How should you analyze this data? See, studying the breakup of revenues, how much percentage is manufactured and how much percentage is traded gives you a very, very good idea how the breakup or how the business is moving. Let me show you in case of Vidhi, how is it that we have done this analysis? So, you know, so that you understand how we source these figures in case you take a look at this. 2020, the manufacturing revenue was 18 to 9.84, which is roughly 18 to 30. So here you go, 18 to 30. And in case of traded, it's 3115. You will see it to be 3115. So that's how we got the breakup of manufacturing and traded. And when you do a bit of a common size analysis, again, something which you should do, you know, manufacturing revenue divided by total revenue. When I say total revenue, it has to be operating in nature, okay? You can't really move up. So taking a simple breakup percentage wise and drawing a conditional formatting heat map uh, around the same gives you a very good idea about the trend. Just compare 2014 and 2020. Over the years, the company has moved more towards manufacturing as compared to trading. Maybe it's quite possible the company has been developing in-house capabilities uh, to develop more further uh, you know, uh, specialized products, which by the way is very much visible on the margins as well. The only reason you know, why you see the margins to be increasing, see, don't get me wrong, it could very well be a function of uh, you know, individual prices of the product, but more or less taking a look at manufacturing products, if the composition of manufacturing products is increasing as compared to traded, one can generally expect the overall profit margin to increase because manufacturing products usually come with a higher profit margin, but that need not always be the case. How do you verify that? It's something we will be studying in the next lectures in the next video series, so stay tuned. In case if you like this video, please do subscribe to our YouTube channel. In case if you have any questions, please do mention in the comment section. You can also read the content of this video on our forum under the financial statement analysis series under you know 107. And moreover, you can also follow us on YouTube and Instagram for more educative content. Thank you so much for watching this video. I look forward to having you guys in the next session.